All right. Um, can you mute it really quick? All right, there we go. Okay, so today, You're on mute, Ashley. I thought it was me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So we're going to continue on facial treatments, watching a PowerPoint today over acne um, to give you a little bit more insight into that. Take notes over the PowerPoint. It will be listed later. Um, this is a part of the chapter, except it's in PowerPoint form and it's going to be presented from someone else. And tomorrow um, we'll finish up the chapter and do um, another back facial demo so everybody can um, and then that will be your um, week as far as facial treatments are concerned. I'm going to start DM people um, about uh, advising sessions. If I'm not able to get to you um, by next Wednesday, I will just email it to you, but I'll be texting you times um, in the morning that um, we can do your advising session. Um, I'm going to put a list up of the terms that you need to include on your diagram. I'm going to be working on that. And posted your skin analysis project. The goal of that is to find, if you can, three people that have three that have, that have three different Fitzpatrick types. So Fitzpatrick 1, Fitzpatrick 3, Fitzpatrick 5. And with those three Fitzpatrick types, try to determine their skin type. And then when you're determining your skin type, determine any of their skin conditions. So you're going to determine the Fitzpatrick type that they are based off the scale that we went over. You're going to determine their skin type based off the characteristics of how to determine a skin type. And then you're also going to determine any skin conditions. And then put those conditions in the zones of the face that we talked about last week. There is an attached chart to yesterday's um, post. Uh, so it should be on there and you can just print it out three times. I, for whatever reason, something changed. And so now when I try to post the videos, I don't even have permission. So that's why I've been having trouble posting them and people like, here's the video. I haven't been able to post it. So I've been trying to contact Maddie to see what's going on and figure it out. Because even when I post it, it's still at it's still requiring you guys to have permission. So I emailed her today to figure out what's going out there, going on there. And that's why some of the posts have been paid because I like to put everything together and I haven't had permission. So I'm um, trying to figure that out, but I will make sure I post everything. Um, I'm gonna put those assignments in Google Classroom so you can actually submit just a picture of your skin analysis in a picture or you do a little video of your skin diagram where you're going around the circumference of it um, and that will suffice for that back facial someone asked yesterday find a male or female model and set it up according to um, the protocol that we did as far as products are concerned since we haven't gone over that those of you um, that are new i'm gonna write a little um note on the post today where you can look at the different products that you can use to set that up. And then tomorrow we'll watch a video and then do a live demo and finish finish the chapter. Um, I think that's it. To make sure I touch base on everything. I think that's it. Yes. Yeah, because I was supposed to get it up last week and I didn't. So yeah, still have plenty of time. But the diagrams do tomorrow. It doesn't feel like Wednesday because we weren't here on Monday. Um, okay, so we started. Ashley, is due tomorrow? The skin diagram. Oh, I know that, but I'm talking about the other things that you, you've had. No, because I just put it up last night. I try to give you guys time. No, it's not due tomorrow. Okay, so it's the three skin analysis and the back facial is due You'll let us know when that's due, but the skin diagram definitely. Yeah, yes, just the skin diagrams due tomorrow. 
Okay. Because I couldn't go on to the thing. So when well, you post when um, we're able to, it said something about permission or something. Yeah, that's what I was just explaining. So for whatever reason, something got changed and now I need permission okay. to put the video up. So that there's been a delay because something was changed and I don't even have permissions. So okay. when I do finally figure it out, I post it, it's still requiring permission from you guys. So I sent Maddie an email trying to address the situation and I'll see what she says back because she's like our IT person. But she something changed. Like they made a basic login or basic um what's the word link that we're supposed to do all aesthetic classes on but right. for whatever reason it requires permission even today i clicked on that link but it brought up a different link so i went reposted because it's not the link that she put so i don't know um but yeah it's that's why there's been an issue because um i have to have permission for whatever reason and she said she changed it but it's still funky because this morning when i did it it was weird so um i'm just waiting on maddie to address that but uh, that's the reason for the videos i'll go ahead and post everything else i guess and just have to go back and post the video when i get permission okay um and then just continue to work on what are we chapter 15 your sin gauge everybody should Engage. All new people have access to Cengage, access to kits. Everybody good? Okay, cool. All right. Actually, um, do we get access to Cengage for glasses too? What'd you say? Do we get access to Cengage like for the lash part of it? No. So if you're an esthetician, you can attend lash classes on Mondays. You are required to do only the assignments that Miss um, uh, Sharina assigns to you. But you're not responsible for doing Cengage because that's too much and that's confusing. You're not responsible for um, doing Cengage, therefore you will not have access to it. Okay, I was kind of just curious of the like what practical requirements we need for lashes because there is none on our aesthetic spectacle requirements it should be it doesn't say like a lash portion no okay i'll have to go back and look at it because initially it was on there um there was a classic a hybrid volume all that so i'll go back and look and see but it should be on there if not i'll send maddie an email and let them know okay thank you any other questions Okay, those of you that are in here, do you happen to have headphones so it doesn't echo? You have some? Do you have some? Do you have some? All right. Okay. Do you happen to have headphones? Do you happen to have headphones? Okay. Do you mind putting them in, just so it doesn't echo? Because I'm gonna. I mean, I don't have a big screen to like play this on. So let me see your tab. All right. Well, I guess you can just push it on there and leave it on here. Okay, those of you that are online, can you see the screen? Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. So please, thank you. everybody online, can you see the screen? Yes. Can yes. or can't? Yes. 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 Okay. Have can everybody hear? Today, today we are yes. talking acne and be professional, postules, popules, and protocols with Miss Lydia Stefati. Um, you know, acne acne can be one of the most puzzling skin it. conditions. I think you need to click on something. There are many causes and equally as many types of acne conditions. In this one-hour webinar with industry veteran Lydia Sarfati, we will be discussing we will discuss how acne affects the population differently, as well as acne types and causes. We'll also cover treatment room necessities, home care, and effective ingredients. Lydia Sarfati is the founder and CEO of Repassage, the first company to bring CV-based skincare treatments and cosmetics to the U.S. market. As an industry leader and luminary, she presides over Repassage's 
50,000 square foot manufacturing, research, development, and training facility in New Jersey. She travels all over the world educating estheticians and has authored several books and publications. She also serves as the U.S. Chair for Sedesco. We are just thrilled to have Lydia with us here today. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And Lydia, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I am very happy to be able to share with you this webinar. Actually, uh, I am in right now sunny Florida on my little mini vacation. So, uh, happy President's Day to everyone, and um, I hope the, the hour that we will spend together is going to be very educational and very helpful in this very important subject. So thank you for joining us and it is my pleasure. So the goal of today's webinar is to gain truly a better understanding of, uh, of acne and to uh, help us to um, achieve a greater result for our client. Although acne is certainly a medical term and it is a medical condition, we as estheticians are faced with, I would say on a daily basis, I know when I used to work in my skincare center in Manhattan, uh, I would see on an average of my clients that would come in and would say, you know, I've gone the route of dermatologists, I've gone the route of medicine and uh, taking all different type of medication, nothing really to help. So I'm sure that you have clients like this coming to your salons and certainly it's always very good idea to check with the state board in terms of the soft practice of what is that you can or cannot do when it comes to removal of comedone nostrils and media. So it's always advisable to check the state state those regulations. So number one, uh, the topic of, uh, of my webinar is going to be how acne affects the population, how acne forms, common acne types, opportunities to control acne, professional treatments, home care, treatment room guidelines, ingredients, and then we will end with certainly a Q&A. Uh, we basically in our salons we see uh, different types of clientele, different age groups. So this is a very interesting fact from American Academy of Dermatology that in the 20s we have a higher percentage of female being affected by acne. As you can see, the percentage is about 50, vis-a-vis 42 percent male. But it's interestingly enough that in the 50s, you still have a higher percentage of female being affected by acne versus vis-a-vis the -vis male client. And you may uh, hear your clients coming in and saying to you, well, I just don't know what's happening. Now I have wrinkles and pimples. I thought I have outgrown that face. But uh, there are different type of things that are happening, especially with the menopausal client. And I will touch base on that a little bit later. So acne is the most common skin condition in the United States. Uh, it's affecting up to 50 million Americans annually. Nearly 85% of all people have acne at some point. And acne occurs mostly on the face, chest, and back. This is an astonishing number of a $2.2 billion dollars. Uh, being spent on treatment of acne, and that is both um, dermatological treatments 
as well as over-the-counter treatments as well. So this is a very interesting second fact. 11% will seek a dermatologist, 20% will go to skin care center, 30% will use an over-the-counter medication, while 40% will do absolutely nothing. So look at this great opportunity. 40% of people actually are doing right now absolutely nothing when it comes to their skin care. So always like with every single webinar, I just always like to review the skin structure. That's what we are dealing with. And it's very important that we always take a refresher course and really truly understand the function of the skin, the function of the sebaceous glands, where they are touched, uh, what is the uh, formation of the sebum in the skin? I will definitely go over it as well. But very often we forget, and I know we all have gone to schools and have gone through the skin structure and histology, but so often we forget the real true function of the skin and how everything is formed. Acne is an inflammatory lesion of the sebaceous glands. The first signs of acne are usually seen during puberty when there's an increase in androgenic hormones. This stimulates production of sebum, filling the sebaceous duct. Overabundant sebum renders the barrier more penetrable and easily irritated. The inflamed walls of the sebaceous gland opening hinder emptying the contents. <coughs> this plugged follicle can create an open comedone or blackhead. The color of blackheads is broken down melanin. In closed comedones or blackheads, the sebaceous gland isn't dilated wide enough for the sebum to reach the surface. Instead, the sebum remains enclosed by the epidermis. Closed comedones may often become inflamed and progress into papules. Papules form when stagnant sebum is broken down by bacteria into short chain fatty acids. This irritates and inflames the wall of the spacious gland. These lesions, or papules, are small, solid, slightly raised areas of the skin, less than half an inch in diameter. They may appear rounded, smooth, or rough. Skin color, red, pink, or brown. Increased blood circulation of the inflamed papule engages the immune system, sending white blood cells into the region and creating pus. The result is a pustule. Pustules feature more visible inflammation than papules. So this is just a little uh, story of the birth of the pustule, and it's always very good to be reminded of. So when you are faced with, uh, during your analysis and your consultation with a pustule, you know you should not be taking a lenses and start picking and poking at it. Uh, it is clearly acne is an inflammatory lesion of the sebaceous gland. And this is where, uh, as they say, the whole story starts. So we can begin with a keratinized plug that blocks the sebum that basically is stagnant in your pilus sebaceous opening. That stagnant sebum is broken down then by bacterial enzymes into short chain fatty acids. That's what begins to form the papule. At that point, you have blood cells that are rushing into dealing with the foreign material to prevent real infection. Bingo, partial is born. So when we look at what we should pick and what we should not pick, what should be extracted and what should not be extracted, is important to really understand the whole birth of the pasture. Here you have two different type of slides. In one slide, you clearly see 
small little pustules that are present and those could be pierced and extracted again making sure that your state license allows you to do that it's always important to check that on the other hand you see a skin that has irritation inflammation and very stagnant comedones uh, you can see that they have been in the skin for quite some time how do i know that do you see the black um, area that is then surrounded it's kind of raised it means that those comedones have not been extracted for a very very long time and left in the skin not extracted properly will then again lead into the pustule when it comes with this type of skin and later on we will show the proper extraction but best not to use a steam on this type of condition. Why? Because you see that this is a Fitzpatrick scale one, it's light, it's inflamed, and using a steamer, for example, soften these comedones will do very little to help you with the extractions, but it further will make the skin more irritated and flamed. So the best coast, the best action here would be to use a disincrustation solution together with a galvanic parent. And I will talk about it a little later on. So again, open comedon is certainly you can see through the follicle there is either a stagnant oxidized sebum. And sometimes here again would I find some clients because perhaps they're using very abrasive um, uh, type of peelings on the skin or exfoliates or granule, the tip is not going to look oxidized, it's not going to look black but white. So they will say, well, you know, I don't have comedones and my skin is dry, but you know better than that, right? The skin is dehydrated, so just word of caution there. Close comedone will have a stratum corneum growth over it and it will not be able you will not be able to extract it without actually using a lancet once again check if that permits you to do so so acne lesions papules are small solid slightly raised areas of the skin that are half an inch in diameter they certainly will vary in appearance and they might be either rounded smooth rough or skin colored red or pink here you see a variety of those actually on the chin area you really see that a lot now here again I would use the synchrostation. I would use an alkaline synchrostation solution, and you would be able to saponify some of these hardened uh, stagnant sebum and be able to do proper extraction. Media, again, you will find sometimes great deal of media around the eye area, on the upper cheek area. On this slide, we have both media and comedones, and especially, again, you can see the comedones have been there for quite some time. Uh, they are uh, the area surrounding the open area of comedone is raised. It looks in flame. Here again, proper extractions are very important. Now, these are pastures, but unfortunately here is a client who has done a lot of damage themselves. Uh, you know, I always say there is one thing if we can teach our clients to do is to not take their skin because all of these here are secondary lesions of incorrect extractions. They are inflamed. There is a bacterial infection. There is redness. Uh, this is really something that 
very often the client has done themselves. So they might have started off with a pasture and then they end up with the clusters. So in this condition, definitely avoid the skin area. There is more just soothing, calming. Uh, don't do any manipulations. Don't use any massage technique here. Uh, we will again discuss the proper protocol. But this client's skin would just require a great deal of calming and soothing and helping them to heal better. So, of course, addressing their diet as well. What are the determining causes of problem skin? Very often it's hereditary. And this one, unfortunately, unfortunately, comes from the male side of the family. So mothers are there, if you are clear, it's not your fault. Of course, everything <laughs> else is your fault, but acne is not your fault. So the heredity has definitely an impact. Hormonal stress, we know that. Some cosmetics and hair products. Environmental exposure, especially solar over the counter usage of products on the skin may cause acne breakouts and some medication. So here are basic common acne types. Papules, nodules, pustules, blackheads, and whiteheads. And most common type of acne that I dealt with was acne vulgaris. Most common form of acne is relevant during your teenage years. And it is a direct result of the increase of the male hormone, the testosterone, and the androgens are just flowing through the body. And definitely it develops more during the puberty, but it can be triggered at any age. Remember that those ladies that are coming in with a menopause and all of a sudden they're breaking out. Well, here is a situation where the estrogen ups by about 50% and uh, the tetacetron is triggering, causing not only breakouts but also excess hair growth. And here what I have seen very often with the clients because they get the excess hair growth, especially on the chin and on the lower jawline. They take tweezers. Those tweezers are not properly sterilized. They pick on the skin and of course they cause even further infection and further breakouts. So definitely make sure that you are in your salon some type of hair removal procedures, whether it is waxing or laser or electrolysis, uh, the ladies that are coming in in their 50s will all have those issues, so it's better to be prepared and ready. Now, this is acne that I have seen in my practice not very often, thank God, because it's unfortunately very um, difficult uh, to know this problem. This is what you were asking about. I think it was you yesterday about the crafting, right? Isn't that you? Who was that? Oh, was you? Asking about acne ex corte? I thought it was you. Well, anyways, this is what she's talking about. When you're scratching at yourself, it can cause a disorder and cause um, uh, more inflammation in the skin, especially if you have dirty fingernails or scratching, like if there's dirt on your nails and you're scratching that. So this is what she's talking about. Again, it's kind of like a little introduction to disease and disorders. So you'll hear it again, and hopefully it makes more sense then. Fine. Uh, this acne is called excretion, and it is basic nervous peaking. So you will see almost like the client is digging out. You can yeah. see literal holes in their skin. Uh, the skin can be really infected. And in this condition, I would definitely work very closely with a dermatologist but also with a, a psychologist as well as providing them with just calming, relaxing, and hydrating treatments. 
um, this is a rather difficult case to treat and all three um, the professionals would need to be involved to really have a successful outcome of this type of a condition. Acne cosmetica is so easy. Um, um, I almost was bored in this type of condition because the minute we uh, remove the culprits, um, like makeup and certain pomades or certain sunscreens, the skin cleared up right away. So some of the ingredients that you want to stay away from in makeup or sunscreen or conditioners or hair pomades is actually isopropyl myristate. This is a highly comedogenic ingredient, so we definitely want to stay away from those. Lanolin and mineral oil are not comedogenic, but they are occlusive, so they are staying on the surface of the skin. But where the trick comes in, if you're having a formula that has isopropyl myristate in combination with lanolin or lanolin oil, you really have then a, a what I call the double whammy, because the isopropyl myristate penetrates in, then lanolin basically stays on the top and it causes these kind of conditions. Cystic acne is extremely severe case of acne. Uh, here in my practice, uh, as a practicing esthetician for many, many decades, uh, I really had to work very closely with dermatologists. And this type of condition responded extremely well to Accutane, but of course this kind has to be under medical supervision and um, in, in conjunction with the dermatologist, I was able to achieve very good results in helping to remove the comedones and at the same time to deal with um, the uh, kind of side effects of Accutane, which is severe skin dehydration. But uh, the uh, kind of the uh, million dollar question here is how do you deal with severe dehydration without utilization of a moisturizer? So we, we had wonderful serums that were seaweed based, so it was a lot of soothing, a lot of calming, a lot of hydration. Seaweeds are very rich in the binds as well as polysaccharides, so we we're able to provide moisture, hydration, and soothing of the skin without actually putting in any oils. So cystic acne is a good result when you treat the condition together with a dermatologist. There are additional types of acne that I have come across over my four decades of working as an esthetician. One is acne complata, which is a basic severe hereditary acne caused by, um, you know, you really like the picture before that I have showed you. Acne detergent, which is caused by very abrasive cleansers and different types of products that is used on the skin. Acne malorca, which is the overexposure to the sun. Acne mechanica, sometimes you have seen young boys, especially if they are playing football from around the football uh, chin straps from their helmets. We would see a lot of acne formation there. And acne medicamentosa, which is caused by steroids. So very often you will see that condition, especially on the back of the chest area. So what do we kind of need? Um, three different factors to create the perfect storm. So we need an enclosure, we need bacteria, and we need sebum. In order to create a closed comedon, you need sebum and you need enclosure. So what is enclosure? Enclosure is the buildup of dead skin cells on the surface of the skin. 
Now, irritation will be caused by bacteria. So you then have your sebum, you have your bacteria, you're going to have, especially bacteria, P. acne bacteria are going to create fatty irritating acids, which will then lead into full-blown acne. So bacteria, sebum, and enclosure will be created. What I call, you need all three things to have the perfect storm. So enclosure, now when we look at this type of situation, we like to address all three things. Enclosure means get rid of the accumulated dead skin cells, bacteria, work with antibacterial ingredients, and sebum, reduce the formation of oil. Now, um, opportunities to control acne are both professional treatments and aesthetic equipment, home care, and effective ingredients. So I'd like to discuss with you a few of those. What is the most important? When you're treating acne, you must have, or for that matter, any skin conditions, you need to have a real sterilizer, autoclave, especially if you're going to reuse the comedon extractors. I'm not a fan of those, but if you are in love with comedon extractors, you must have autoclave to sterilize correctly and kill all microorganisms and bacteria. All implements, spatulas, and tweezers must be also placed in autoclave. That is very, very important. We can also use isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol and submerge all of your electrodes for 20 minutes because those you are going to reuse and you cannot put those in autoclave. So daily cleaning, I'm always, that's my kind of pet peeve that the rooms need to be absolutely perfectly clean between each client. Um, Go-to product, bleach, Clorox, it's inexpensive and it kills most viruses as well as bacteria. Towels and linen should be placed and replaced after every client. Don't reuse it. Make sure that everything is really extremely well clean. <coughs> Do not reuse facial sponges. They should be discarded after each use. This is why give them to your I client. am a big fan of just cutting. I also don't like using hot towels on the skin. I always find that um, they're too rough, they're too irritating. And my question is always how well they really are washed clean and what else was in that washing machine together with those towels. So best is to use things that you can throw away. Um, yes, I am in love with bleach because it's inexpensive and it kills effectively pathogenic microorganism. Great to clean your whole room, wipe your counters, and clean everything that you use in the facial room. So what are the professional treatment solutions that I go to and I have done as an esthetician for over four decades? Well, first of all, we need to start with an absolute must, which is your magnifying lamp. You cannot effectively uh, remove comedones, media, and pastures without having a proper, proper magnifying lamp. I recommend a 6 dia because anything more than that will distort what you're looking at, and you may not have a proper precise extraction. I only use steam if applicable. I don't use steam on Fitzpatrick scale one, two, or three, especially when the skin is of that uh, very sensitive, inflamed acne, definitely I 
I absolutely skip the steamer. High frequency, absolutely against every state has its own <laughs> directive when it comes to the utilization of equipment. So we must again check state boards. Sterilizer, it's a must. Sharp box container, if you're allowed to use lancets. Disincrustation machine, again, uh, check your state board, but I love the synchronization machine. Nothing works better than that. So, pre-consultation. I always will recommend, especially for the first-time client, to arrive 10 to 15 minutes before their initial appointment. Main concerns with acne, how long they have been treating it. Uh, I discuss things with them like their lifestyle, their stress level, because remember, stress will cause breakouts. So I will talk to them first about basic, you know, have you thought of taking a bath before you go to bed? What do you do for your relaxation? Are you incorporating walks, yoga, meditation, taking a bath, doing something? in a day that is just totally different than everything else. Very important and very often my clients would say, why are you telling me to take a bath? I have nothing wrong with my body. I said, yes, but <laughs> the skin is your body. So we're going to start taking care of you, all of you. And taking a bath is very relaxing. Uh, I definitely always ask them to bring all of their products because I want to take a look at their ingredients, their usage, what are they doing. It's very important. Also, if they are on Accutane, of course, my procedure will be different because don't forget this skin becomes even more sensitive. And uh, it's very if they're pregnant, if they're nursing, what type of allergies they have. All of those questions are very relevant into what type of course of treatment you're going to have. Uh, this I recommend if you can, if you can um, basically write it down because that's important. The treatment plan should always be discussed with the client. So for cleansing, would you be using a cream cleanser, a mousse cleanser, a gel cleanser? What type of a cleanser would you be using? For deeper cleansing, are you going to do disincrustation, a steamer? Would you be using exfoliation, granule, acid, enzyme? What type of exfoliation and how will you be preparing the skin? Don't forget that the synchrostation is in a way an alkaline exfoliation. And your acid exfoliators are your glycolic acid and your so your alpha hydroxy acids and your beta hydroxy acids are your acids that you could use also. The beta hydroxy acid is better in combination with glycolic acid, especially for treatment of accumulated dead skin cells when it comes to very oily, acneic skin because the oil tends to stick the dead skin cells together and that's what causes that blockage as well. So we need to exfoliate the skin, but we need to decide which way we're going to go. You certainly would not use a brush on open lesions or pustules or again if it's Patrick scale one or two. Electrical equipment, ionophoresis, ferradic, interferential, button suction, high frequency and indirect or direct high frequency. Would you be using a massage and so would it be oil cream or gel and certainly then you would write your masks, your products, your main treatment objective, your recommended future salon treatment and any other comments about the treatment that you have proceeded with. The treatment plan is very important. 
So what so, are so acne facial and effective facial? Like I have soft skin analysis, skin type, or size, type of acne lesions, irritation, and sensitivity, determining exactly what the client would need. You would begin with the gentle acne analysis after your treatment plan. You would choose the right cleanser. You certainly want to choose a cleanser that's not going to be irritating the cleanser with a proper pH. Um, always, of course, wear gloves in treatment of any skin conditions, but especially acne skin. Uh, like I have said already earlier on, the syncrustation is my go-to uh, product, the syncrustation solution, also with the disinfection machine to really saponify, especially these hardened sebum that's been stagnant in the parasympathetic opening for a long time. This is what really helps me dissolve and eliminate the common things, difficult common things to eliminate. Uh, what I find that clients that have been using benzoyl peroxide in their products and treatments, that their skin is super sensitive, also is very, very dehydrated, and the skin surrounding the comedone is extremely tight. Uh, the comedone inside is highly keratinized. So it's going to be very difficult for you in the very beginning to try to get rid of every single comedon that's there. Remember, those comedons did not come there overnight and it will take several treatments to accomplish your goals. So proper extraction, gloves for sure. I always like to wrap my fingertips with a, a Kleenex. And again, Kleenex is a brand and I like the medical grade Kleenex that you can get from medical supply uh, um, area stores. Uh, they're non-fragrant and they will not cause any irritation on the skin. I also use sterile cotton swabs. Those are completely sterile and they help me with getting the blackheads out from around the nose area around the nostril area is very difficult. My clients have always said that they could sleep through my extractions. So, uh, you know, the way you do the extractions is very, very important. Uh, for proper media extraction, I use Lancet. I open up the accumulated dead skin cells over the uh, media of course discarded in a proper sharp box and then very easily the media is actually removed from the skin so when you're going to use a lancet you always want to go horizontal to the skin you don't want to pierce it down uh, the way I learned how to do the sterilized needle lens and the removal is practicing on a balloon. You blow the air into balloon and just pick the skin without popping it. When you are able to do that, you're going to be an excellent media remover without causing any scarring. So, we will show you some manual extractions. Wearing your vinyl drops from your index fingers with cotton that had two drops of hydromethic ginger applied to it. For proper removal of comedones, use the side of your fingertips to exert firm pressure on the skin surrounding the comedone. Spread the skin around the comedone and begin to apply light pressure. Do not squeeze with your nails, only the size of your fingertips. Another effective but gentle way to remove a comedone is with sterile cotton swabs. Hold the swabs with your index finger and thumb and gently press down on both sides of the particle. If the contents don't expel right away, move the swabs gently from side to side and 
and definitely using everything that's sterile. What is important post-extraction is definitely utilization of clay masks. Clay masks are very effective. They calming, they soothing. We use diatomaceous earth as a clay. We use kaolin as a part of clay and uh, um, wonderful uh, calamine and calcium powders. So uh, obviously we want to leave the clay mask for at least 10 to 15 minutes to come and soothe the mask. Then we will apply cold coppers. Uh, and then we'll use some ice cube if necessary to reduce the inflammation and then remove it. The final step in the acne facial is going to be using a wonderful high frequency and we will use two different type of high frequency argon light which is your violet light neon which is your orange both will provide excellent bactericidal effect slightly stimulating and it will help with the healing process so definitely high frequency is a great effect decrease inflammation allow faster healing and prevent secondary lesions I would have clients just pop in over their lunch break to get some what they call the high frequency booster. So definitely much better than popping and squeezing their pimples in the front of the mirror. Uh, what are the contraindications to remove all metal jewelry? If the client has, is pregnant, heart problems, blood pressure, epileptic, asthmatic, any type of metal implant, heavy metal, dental work, or braces, you certainly would skip high frequency. So for direct, I just would um, place the finger on the electrode then place the electrode on the skin and leave it there for a few seconds. So, you know, uh, definitely you don't want to leave on the same spot of the electrode to cause any kind of burning on the skin. Uh, for sparking, this would be using the electrode of an acne lesion with kind of sparking, removing and touching the skin. Now, for uh, is important once we do the cleansing part and um, using the clay mask to prevent the um, secondary lesions, we also want to hydrate the skin. And for that purpose, I love using the iontophoresis. So uh, the iontophoresis would be, so we know the synchrostation is for saponification and the synchrostation is for removal of the comedones but then the galvanic current, which is your iontophoresis, is using the current with water-soluble solution on a positive pole to basically hydrate the skin. And you would want to use an, an, a product that contains hyaluronic acid, that contains seaweeds, that is able to really put back the moisture polysaccharides, mucopolysaccharides, uh, sodium PCA, any of these type of ingredients will hydrate the skin. 
the key important element is post consultation treatment. We normally don't leave enough of time to discuss home care product with your client. That is a must. And don't just say hi, bye, kiss, kiss, and leave the client go. Thoroughly discuss what is it they should use at home. That is a key. So they should have products that contain salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid, is a keratolytic substance. It will help them to reduce the sebum production. So remember, we're addressing like a sebum, right, to decrease the sebum production. So how it works, salicylic acid is, my, my chemist calls it the torpedo. Kind of know how to find the oil, they know how to reduce it, and it has a tremendous action on uh, the sebum and preventing comedones formation. Willow bark extract is another great ingredient. So you may have a formula that has salicylic acid and a willow bark extract um, that really gives the client skin the perfect combination, both soothing and keratolytic. So reduces the accumulated dead skin cells. Alpha hydroxy acids work well, but I prefer them in combination with beta hydroxy acid as well. So any any form of alpha hydroxy acid, glycolic acid, which is derived from sugar cane, lactic acid, malic acid from apples, citric acid, and tartaric acid from gray. So any of these are great. Kojic acid is also my go-to ingredient, especially if I'm recommending some type of a lotion or solution to apply at night. What I like about kojic acid is that it has also a lightening effect. So uh, sometimes you're going to see a client, especially if they've been picking and poking on their skin, they will have a darkening around that area. Kojic acid works very, very well. It inhibits that production of melanin and is acting also as the lighting agent. Sodium hyaluronate or your hyaluronic acid is excellent. Here we derive this from sugar beets, but also we have uh, recommend things like mucopolysaccharides, and polysaccharides that are all about hydration. Licorice, licorice extracts, again, are wonderfully lightening. And we have to always think about uh, post-acne condition, very important. Glavadrin, which is the um, raw material or the ingredient that is um, compounded and extracted from the licorice root works greatly. It prevents that teresinase activity, but it doesn't cause any cytotoxicity. And it has great uh, healing and anti-inflammatory. Alantone is another great ingredient, soothing, non-irritating, relieves uh, dehydration, and it helps with healing. Aloe vera is a go-to ingredient for many thousands of years, used for sunburns by the native <laughs> um, indigenous people to the desert, and it certainly is a marvelous healing, calming, and soothing plant. My favorite here is Laminaria digitata seaweed, 42 trace elements, 18 amino acids, 12 vitamins, fetal hormones, microelements, and absolutely everything your skin needs for proper recovery, hydration, and um, um, healthy balance. Zinc, um, I'm in love with zinc. Zinc is an amazing ingredient. Not only I recommend to find a product that contains zinc 
as a sun protection, but it is an amazing product for sebum regulating, anti-inflammatory, it is a free radical scavenger, it's antibacterial, just think of all these, you know, fabulous, um, um, you know, people on the beach uh, back in the day, they just would. Um, we put the zinc, white zinc on their nose, and, um, you know, today, of course, we have myconizing uh, that you don't have to look like a clown wearing this type of protection. Zinc is best also found in these particular foods like oysters, red meats, nuts, and seafood. And zinc is essential in maintaining also very healthy immune system. Ictimol, um, I've used Ictimol back in 1975. I, I just love, love this ingredients. Ictimol dates back to the, believe it or not, Jurassic period. It's marine sediments. Um, at the sea level, cleanses the skin, uh, out of bacteria, we use this a lot in the product. Calcium carbonate, uh, great for super oily skin, calamine, uh, calamine is a combination of zinc oxide and ferratic oxide, excellent, excellent astringent property. Sulfur, with sulfur though you have to be careful because people may have allergies to sulfur, but it's great cartilitic action, great in reducing uh, basically uh, excess oil, uh, but when you're using a product with sulfur base, you have to stay out of the sun, you have to be very careful, and you have to check to make sure that you're not allergic to sulfur. Uh, microalga, peripherium, zinc oxide, that's a combination of seaweed with zinc oxide, um, wonderfully um, delivering really everything that we need in terms of both hydration, but at the same time protecting the skin from infection. And, um, you know, we must not forget in our practice as estheticians to also provide a sensory element for the client. So what are the wonderful herbs that we can do? Uh, offer them chamomile tea, have nice little lavender essential oil to do a little bit of hand massage with, lang lang, basil, all of those type of oils will create a well-being sensory great effect for the client. I like to massage with lavender earlobes, for example, or while they are use where they're on, under the mask and do a little neck massage or a little shoulder massage just to create the well-being and relaxation. Lifestyle and nutrition is important, but I like to kind of take away some of the myths. Chocolate does not cause acne, but do eat well-balanced diet and drink six to eight glasses of water daily and definitely try to always eat healthy. Uh, best refer to a licensed nutritionist or also seek out a Sedesco diplomat. Uh, Sedesco diplomats have gone through nutritional course as well. So my final words in treating acne, I have to tell you, is one of the most rewarding experiences for you. It has been for me as an esthetician to be able to improve the client's skin, to improve their self-confidence, and to look and feel better. I must tell you, it has always been my great privilege as an esthetician to be able to change someone's opinion of themselves and give them the confidence. Knowledge is power. I will open it up now for definitely for some questions as well. And before we open it up, please definitely follow me on Facebook and 
and Twitter, and you can email me, Lydia at repishash.com. I also have my own blog, and I have written a book called Success at Your Fingertips. So it's everything you ever wanted to know about the spa industry. Now you know how to ask. Ask Lydia. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lydia. That was just fabulous, awesome advice all across the board. We have a couple questions, but if anybody else has any, feel free to take those in now. Um, let me see. I have a bit of an echo, so let me figure out if I can stop that. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, so, four questions here. Our first one, we're wondering, um, why is it that, and I'm going to butcher this, I'm sure, comedogenic ingredients cause acne? Why is that? Why is that? Because the comedogenic ingredients actually have um, a low enough molecule to be able to penetrate through that stratum corneum. So isopropyl myristate is a type of an oil that is easily absorbed by the pilocytosis opening and it can affect uh, the formation of comedones. Very good. Um, and in a spray bottle, what is the ratio that um, an esthetician should use for bleach to water? Use it as a cleanser. Well, I would say that on, the, on all surface, in the salon, especially in the treatment room, you should use not the diluted bleach, but full strength to make sure that all viruses and bacteria are uh, properly disinfected. Very good. And there have been a lot of new um, cleansing oils emerging on the market. What is your opinion on those? Uh, I think was a, uh, all those oils were kind of a trend, um, but that trend is dying very quickly. And um, it, 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 as I have even seen uh, lately reports by Mintel uh, that uh, the sales of these oils have gone down substantially. Um, I don't really believe in oils as cleansers. Uh, I think that uh, you need to use a proper cleanser, <clears throat> and the proper cleanser pH is very important. Uh, I would recommend, depending again on skin sensitivity and Fitzpatrick scale, but anywhere between 5.2 and a pH of 7.2 would be the range of cleansers that would be most suitable. They would be neither too acidic or too alkaline to be used on a daily basis. Very good. All right, this member wrote in, after using high frequency on clients, I often see the pustules come back with a strong yellow color, I'm assuming some type of infection, but what could it be? I used the best infection control I was taught. Well, uh, without really uh, seeing that particular um, situation, it's difficult to answer, but, um, um, you know, in infection or a pustule should not come back if it was extracted in most sanitary and sterile conditions. So if you use gloves, if you used everything sterilized, if you have disinfected the skin correctly, afterwards use a clean electrode and you have done properly the germicidal effect of the high frequency, the client should be good to go. So try practicing perhaps a bit more of the uh, sanitation and sterilization 
in the salon to prevent this type of thing from occurring again most importantly have teach your clients to keep their fingertips away from their skin because you might be doing everything right and then the client touches their skin with dirty fingertips fingernails contain you know, it's like a petri dish, it's a nightmare. So you just have to teach them proper sanitation at all. Very good advice. All right. Um, another member is wondering, she's been asked by uh, many clients if acne can be caused by dairy. Sorry. Um, <laughs> So sorry, I'm choking here. Um, you know, again, if this person is allergic to dairy, they may have a flare-up. So it really depends on your food allergy. The best thing to do if a client has a question about a particular food allergy, they should be referred to a food allergist specialist. Very good. Very easy test. Uh, they go to an allergist. They can do. Uh, they can at each visit test at least ten to twenty different foods, and they will be able to see whether they have particular allergy to particular food group. Awesome. Oh, we have so. All right, ladies. Any questions? Beneficial. Learn something. Okay. All right, ladies, that is all I have for class today. This will be, um, it was recorded and it will be um, posted later on today. Continue to work on your skin diagrams. I'll add that list um, shortly before the day's up and that's all I have for you guys. So tomorrow we'll finish up the chapter um, and do some hands-on stuff in class. Enjoy the rest of your day, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.